So I've already launched SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to do a new query. And for this query, I am going to be using a inner join, which is the default. It's the most restrictive. It's looking at two different tables, and it only displays rows that have matching records on the key. And I'm going to show you what that means. <laughs> so we're going to use, um, I'll go ahead and put in our little comment at the top. And we're going to use the AP database on this. And we're going to go ahead and key in select. We're going to wait on the columns. I'm going to say from vendors, which is table one. I'm going to join vendors to invoices. And that will allow us to share data among those two tables. And the column that we are going to use to connect the tables is the one that they have in common. So if you come in here and you expand databases, and you expand AP, and you expand invoices, and you expand vendors, and you kind of look at those columns, you'll notice that vendor ID is in both. And in fact, it's a primary key in vendors, and it is a foreign key in invoices. That is why we put from vendors. Vendors is our table one. That's got the primary key. And we're joining it with invoices. Invoices is the table we have related using a foreign key. So we are going to be joining the two tables on vendor ID. Now, if I just key in vendor ID equals vendor ID, SQL Server is going to be quite confused because it does not know which table is which? Okay, I have vendor ID in both. It is going to get confused. And that is why we have little red squiggles. <laughs> so what you have to do is prefix with the name of the table. So if you're doing anything with columns and the same column name is in multiple tables, you do need, you do need to put the name of the table a dot and the column name. So I'm going to say vendors dot vendor ID. And then over here, I'm going to say invoices dot vendor ID. Okay, and that kind of resolves the issue. Now, as far as the columns that I want to display when this query runs, I want to display invoice number. And if we look at our columns, you can see invoice number is coming from invoices. And I also want to display vendor name. Vendor name is coming from the vendor table. Now, invoice number does not appear in my vendor table. So I don't really need to worry about prefixing invoice number, okay? Because it's unique. The two tables that I'm looking at, it only appears in one. Same goes for vendor name. Vendor name is not in the invoices table, so I don't need to worry about prefixing it. So I'm going to say select invoice number and vendor name. Okay, and that's pretty much the entire statement. So I'm going to put a little semicolon at the end and I'm going to run it. And because this is an inner join, all I'm going to see are invoices that actually have vendors. If we used to use a vendor and we don't use that vendor anymore, the vendor is no longer in our vendors table, we are not going to see any of their invoices. If we have a new vendor uh, that hasn't been added to the vendor table, uh, but appears on an invoice, 
we wouldn't see them either. Uh, that actually would be an error condition. <laughs> You'll learn about that later. Um, the system should never allow them to create an invoice and put a vendor in it that doesn't exist in our vendor table. Um, that is part of this foreign key, primary key relationship, uh, but we will be talking about that in upcoming weeks. Um, so the bottom line here is that these rows that you see have vendor IDs that are the same in both of these tables, okay, or they would not display. Now, what we're going to do is kind of move this closing comment down here. And that kind of sets us up for our next query.